Hi everyone, my name is Mike. Here at the Animation Academy at Disney's Hollywood Studios, we teach you how to draw Anna, we teach you how to draw Olaf, and now I'm gonna teach you how to draw Elsa. Let's begin with a circle, a small circle about the size of a tennis ball, just above the middle of the page. Nice tennis ball shaped circle. And once again, drawing lightly is going to be the name of the game. Light and messy, and this is definitely going to be light and messy. First, our tennis ball shaped circle. Once you've got your circle drawn, we're gonna do some placement lines to begin to add her features. So be patient because we've got a lot to set up. First is a horizontal line. So find the center of your circle, and then we're going to draw a horizontal line through the circle. Very, very lightly. Now, uh, based on the center of your circle, we can see the radius of our circle. Let's extend that to the left. This is going to give us the, uh, the back of the hair for, the, for behind her head. So roughly the distance of the radius is how far back we're going to go. I'm going to lightly build a little bit of a wall here for that hair that we will eventually get to. So that's for the back. Next, let's begin to frame her eyes. Elsa's eyes are really, really, really big. So we're going to begin by setting the eyes up now by drawing a three-quarter mark uh, from the center of our circle going down. Keep it very light and draw that three-quarter mark. Now we're going to set up the guidelines for the eyes. All right, so I'm going to use my uh, center uh, line and begin to draw this tilt, this tilted line for her eyes going right through the center, and drag this across your circle. Very, very light, very, very messy. Next, we're going to draw the line for the bottom of the eyes. Remember that little three-quarter mark? We're going to use that here and draw a parallel line, matching the one you drew for the top. Try and keep it parallel all the way over. Now be patient, we still have to add a few more things before we can actually draw in the eyes. All right, next, let's set up the spacing for her eyes. All right, so this next line is going to be for the left eye. Your little quarter mark, we're going to set it up right here with this little line to give us the boundary for the left eye. It's a slight bit of a curve. All right, now we need to break down the area uh, for that left eye. If you were to go halfway to the edge of your circle on the left, you could draw a little bitty line there, but actually her eyes are so big, we need to go beyond that. I'm going to draw the boundary for her eye to be pushed back even further. So this is the furthest the eye is going to go uh, for, uh, for the left side. Now for the right eye, because her head is turned, it's going to be a little narrower. So this time we can divide the remaining distance here in half. And we're going to also use the same line to figure out how far to go for her forehead and then how far down to go for her chin. So from this mark here, continue going further to the top. Let it bend back a little bit. A very, very slight arc up on the circle. And this distance we've just established, we're going to use to figure out how to draw the chin. So let's go ahead and from the same, uh, from the same mark, move downwards, uh, downwards, and we're going to draw an angled line going a little lower, below the circle. How far to go, now we're going to have to figure out. So this is where you can do a little bit of measuring. Measure the distance from the top of the line for the eyes to where it hits the edge of your circle. I'm going to use my pencil for this. And I'm going to shift this down to the bottom of the eyes. All right, now that I've got it marked, I'm going to go ahead and use my pencil to repeat, to mark that distance on my paper. So this is where it is. But her chin is actually a little bit lower than this. So there's the mark for the top of her forehead. Now I'm going to move it a little bit lower to mark off the area for her chin. Just a little bit lower. All right, now we're ready to move on to the next part. 
let's begin to set up those uh, features. First, her chin, or not her chin, let's, well, the chin and the cheek. From the right side, I'm gonna begin at the edge of my circle at the guideline for the bottom of the eyes and build her cheek from the left and bring it all the way down to the bottom for her chin. I'm drawing this lightly now, but in a moment, I will make this a little darker. All right, now that we know where the chin is, we can also figure out where her jawline's going to go. So from the left side of your circle, way over here at the back where the guideline for the bottom of the eyes are, we're gonna sweep this shape for her jaw all the way down to the bottom. And now we've set up her jaw and her chin. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make that darker. Here is your first dark mark. And I'll continue this up to the cheek for the right. And we've begun to draw the head of Elsa. All right, let's go ahead and now piece in the right eye. The right eye is gonna be the easier to eye to draw right here. It's gonna fit in this nice little area we've already got cordoned off. So first I'll shape the bottom of the eyelid. Fairly much, it's fairly much following the line. Next is the line for her eye socket falling up a little bit higher. This will give us her, uh, the, the skin from her eyelid. We'll drag it over just a little bit and draw a nice little wedge. And what we're creating now is for the area of her eyelashes. They're gonna curve out from the, the top of her eyelid. Now below this is the shape of the white of the eye. That will fit right here inside your circle and line it up just inside uh, of where your cheek is. So there is the shape for the white of the eye. Now I'm going to go ahead and thicken her eyelashes and uh, draw them sticking out from the eye. And if you think these eyelashes are big, wait till we get to the ones on the other side. All right, there's enough of the eye here now where I can go ahead and darken in, darken in some of my lines. I'm gonna begin by drawing the line for the eye socket going up to the top. Curve over to build her uh, eyelashes. Filling those in. And then I'll curve the shape of the white of the eye down to the cheek. We're getting there. Next we need the, uh, the colored part of the eye. That's gonna be this uh, nice little curve just inside the white of the eye. And then when the color within the iris, we need the pupil. That is the dark section of the eye. That is in a darker little bitty partial circle right inside. And to put a little bit of a gleam in her eye, I'll draw a smaller little bitty circle just underneath the eyelid. And that is for the light reflecting from her eyes. Darken in the pupil shape around it. And uh, there you go, guys. We almost have the right eye finished. You can shade the top part of the iris dark, leaving the bottom part light to suggest eye color. And aside from that, I'll put a couple of lines to indicate some lashes at the bottom of the eyelid, but the eye is done. Pretty good. Now, the bone that is above the eye for her brow, we're gonna extend that just above our guideline and I drag up this mark for her forehead just outside of our circle. I don't want to make that too much darker because we still have to figure out where the rest of the hair is. Speaking of the rest of her hair, uh, she's got an awful lot of hair that uh, she has all fluffed up. So let's build this nice little line to give us the boundary for the top of her hair. All right, now let's move to the left eye. Slightly trickier shape. We have a lot big, a bigger area to work with and a lot more to draw. So we have this nice little rectangle. Let's build the eye within it. First, I wanna shape the bottom of the eyelid. I'm gonna keep that right inside my little rectangle, curving it around. Now, uh, from here, tear duct, I'm gonna curve this up just inside the shape I drew for the eye. I don't wanna continue it. Now I'm gonna build the area for her eye socket just above it. That's gonna go just above our horizontal guideline and curve right over uh, the area for the inside of the eyelid. Don't make this dark yet. All right, 
We're setting up to build the rest of the uh, left eye. Now that we're here, there's one more thing I want to draw before we can go into the details of that right eye. We need to figure out how far the hair is going to go from below the chin. Since we just marked off the area of the forehead and the chin, let's go ahead and block out the area uh, for the hair to the very, very bottom. So, from the guideline for the bottom of the eyes, measure that distance, just like I'm doing here. And now we're going to shift this all the way down and mark it again. Now we know the very bottom of where the hair is going to go. All right, so we'll come back to these later. Let's go ahead and finish up the left eye. All right, as I mentioned before, her eyelashes are really, really long and really, really thick. So let's build the shapes of those lashes. I'm going to continue curving the shape of the eye around to the top of the eyelid. And I'm going to drag it just outside that space we have for the eye. Yeah, the lashes are just that long and thick. And I'll curve this over and uh, fill in those rather thick lashes. And as you get to the top of the eye, it's not as thick. But as it curves around, it does get thick and rather long. All right, there is the basic setup for the eye. Let's add in all the other details. Though we have, we need to draw the iris. So here we go with a curve of the iris, really, really big. So there's the left curve. And now the rest of our circle shape for the iris, follow that around. Notice I'm not really finishing the bottom of the iris. I'm just going to let your imagination fill in those bases. Next is the pupil. That is the dark part of the eye. Let's go ahead and draw that big circle in. Once the circle shape of the pupil is placed, let's go ahead and put in the, uh, the reflection inside the pupil as well. And shade in the rest of our pupil, making it nice and dark. All right, she definitely needs some more color in her eye. So the top part of the iris will have dark. It'll get lighter as you move your way down from both sides. And now we have some eyes for Elsa. Okay, next is her nose and her mouth. Slightly a very, very tricky shapes to draw, but we're going to do our best work in here. We've got some nice guidelines to fill in the spaces. So pay particular attention as I do this. First, we'll draw the outside curve of the nostril. We're going to use the bottom of the circle to draw it. Right up against the wall here, draw this little bitty curve for the outside of the nostril. Okay, that's the first one. Next is the little bitty nostril slit, the little slot that, slot that goes right underneath. Here we go. This is like a little bitty uh, J shape, a, a sideways little J shape. Very tiny. Uh, now we need to draw the little bump on the end of her nose. So for the bump on the end of the nose, we're going to go on the other side of our nice long arc here and set the bump up. It's going to be just below your circle. I'll curve it out and then bring it right back over the guideline for the circle. And there is our nose. Now, if you want, you can make the, uh, the very bottom of that be just a little darker, and that can help you to suggest the nostril on the other side of the face. But there is our nose. Now the lips. Okay, uh, we're going to draw the, her upper lip very, very thin, but we're still going to draw it thick. And she still needs to be smiling. So the placement for the, the lips and the dimple, we can work that in right away using the edge of our circle. Way over here, I'll draw a little bitty mark for the edge of her dimple. It lines up underneath the eye. And I'm going to lightly draw a curve across uh, over to the area under my nose, lightly. So now she's got a bit of a smirk, but we need to have the other side of the smile working as well. So now on the other side of the arc for the center of the face, I'll draw this slight little bitty lift to give us her smile on the other side. And yes, notice I made it rather thick. Now we need to finish the upper lip on the other side, so I'm going to start off thick and drag it right back to the dimple. Let's add the shape of the bottom lip. 
bringing it down to our guide line. Very, very slender line, do not make it too thick. And then uh, the rest of the lower lip, drag it from the dimple, let it slide just a little wider. And now you have her lower lip. All right, onward to the eyebrows. Eyebrows, we'll keep the shapes of the eyebrows fairly, uh, fairly easy. They're a little thick towards the front uh, of her forehead and they get thinner as they move across the eye. And the cool thing is with these guidelines, we have a good place to be able to start. Using the guideline for the left side of the eye, we'll begin her eyebrow. It's a, a gentle S curve that sweeps across her forehead. And the thickest part rests right there on your horizontal guideline. So there's a rough shape of the brow. I'll make it a little bit thicker as I move across. There it is. Let me darken it. And there's our left brow and the right brow uh, on the other side of our crescent. Let me start the right brow on the same gut, just above the same guideline we have for the eyes. And here we go. Add us in. It's going to be a little smaller and it's going to disappear around the forehead on the right. So it's going to get smaller as it curves over. And there we go. We have our brow set. Okay, the face is all set. Let's get the rest of the hair uh, figured out. So, we need to know how far up the hair is going to go. Her hair, she has it lifted fairly high, so I'm going to begin. If you're wondering how, how high does the hair have to be, based on your circle, it's the radius. So, I'm now at the center of my circle once again. I'm drawing a little bitty line going at an angle here to the edge of my circle. That distance is roughly the same distance I'm going to use for the very, very top portion of her hair. So now I know how far to go for the top of her hair. We're going to block out the rest of the shape before we draw any of the particulars of her hair. So first the right side, I'll add these nice little bitty blocked shapes here for her, the, the, the very, very top. And now from the other side of the circle, I can continue moving up and over it to that mark. So as you can see, these are very, very light lines to build the shape of her hair. Very, very poofy right now. Okay, for the hair that curves around her shoulder and goes in front, we need to draw that out as well. So I'm going to expand it just a little bit uh, below our horizontal guideline and then drop it all the way to that mark we made, we measured from the chin. All right, so let's uh, keep moving with the hair. We've got the outer framework of the hair drawn, but she does have a little ponytail at the bottom. So I'm going to continue at the very, very bottom here from the same mark we measured from the chin and continue just a little further and put that little bitty small ponytail hanging down way near the bottom of our page, way down here. All right, we got it set up. Now let's move on to the next part, and that's uh, framing the rest of the hair from underneath her chin or from her jaw. Let's build the rest of the hair moving down. So again, we're just going to keep this very, very light. I'll move this long shape for her ponytail all the way over. It's going to uh, Come down just a little closer, get a little tinier at the bottom, and there's that little bitty uh, uh, tied off section for the hair at the very bottom. I'm just kind of sketching it in so we'll know where it is. And uh, now with all that done, let's get some particulars of how the hair is going to look. So she does have this nice curl that goes across her forehead. And we have some nice guidelines here to help us place how far the curl goes and, and, and how wide it's going to be. So we'll begin just on the right side of our crescent and draw this large curve for the curl that hangs over her forehead. If you're wondering if you should draw this lightly, uh, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and dive into this with a heavier mark. Okay, so that's what the curl is going to be. Now let's work on the next shape from the curl over to the edge of the, the right side of her face. So I'm going to use the shape that I drew and draw this nice long curve and kind of begin this uh, wispy, wavy section of the hair on the top of her head. There's the first one. Okay, these next sections are like little uh, fingers or little bitty uh, shapes of hair that we're going to add, building on the one we've just started. So let's add the next one. I'm going to pick it up where I left off here, add this uh, next little section for her uh, bangs and curve it right over. 
to add the next shape. Now it's fun, if you, as you draw the hair, you might want to consider changing the weight of your line as you draw it because that helps to give uh, the hair a little more life. Okay, so we have the next little section pieced in. I'm going to add another little curve here to draw a little break between the sections of her hair. So this is a nice little bitty, almost banana-like shape in between. And now the next little portion of the hair, I'll drag that over using the outermost portion of the shape I set aside. And there it is, got the next little piece drawn. We're getting closer now. I'll add a smaller, little bitty wispy section underneath it. And then one even closer over here as it dips down just a little bit and curves around the back side of her head. All right, just when you thought it was over for the hair on the right side, there's still one more section of hair that curves uh, around your forehead on the right, and we need to add that in. It's this little bitty S-curve here that sweeps just around her forehead. So add this one little section in right there. All right, now we've got that little section worked out. Uh, let's continue working with the rest of the hair across her head. All right. Let's go ahead and finish out the little curl. So let me add in the bottom section to this little curl in the front. So once more, we're gonna uh, finish with the hair. I'm gonna add this nice little shape to define the hair on the edge of her face. I'm gonna draw this in lightly because we'll actually see the lines of the hair sweeping across her head, but I need to draw the shape first so I'll know where it is. All right, I need to keep going with this for the hair sweeping around her ear. So that's going to be this nice long curve that I'm drawing now on the back of her head. Keeping it within my guidelines for the back of the hair, it's going to sweep up and curve over. Well, that's, that's the first little section. Now we got to move another little piece and divide these sections of the hair moving across her head. So here we go with the next part. All the way up to that little curve. There's our first little section there. You can draw some additional lines to show the hair moving behind her head. I'll add those in over here on the right. So we have that little piece worked out. And now we need to go higher. This next section looks like a gigantic S-curve. So I'm going to draw the edge of my S-curve shape where it curves around the back of her head and then take it all the way to the top and over. So there it looks like a gigantic sideways S-curve. And we'll draw some additional lines to show the hair that, it's, that the hair lines or the hair is flowing with the rest of the shape. So we have this nice huge S-shape here that is for the hair, that's uh, the part that everyone recognizes when they see the film where the hair moves across her head, but we need to get the hair behind as well. So this is a nice big section here and we'll draw, take it all the way to the top using that shape we made earlier. And now as I'm drawing these little wispy sections of the hair that break away to the top and I can move this around and there we go, there's the top of the hair. All right, now, we need to add a few more lines there because as hair, sometimes you can see little shadows across the hair where the head looks thicker in some places and thinner than others. So easy enough, we can do that here. I'll go ahead and uh, draw this nice line here to help to show how the hair is flowing through these big sections. And notice those lines are not dark. They're very, very light. Fantastic. All right, next. Let's keep working with the hair as it moves down the side of her head. Over here, we can draw these little bitty wispy lines to show the hair sweeping across the side of her face. That's why I didn't make the line dark. Plus, she has little sideburns, too. Here we go, the little bitty sideburn shapes. A little bitty small wispy section here. Looks like a little paintbrush. Right above the jawline, covering up her ear. But we still get to see a section of the ear right behind it. Here is the only portion of the ear we're going to see, which is why I'm drawing it fairly dark. All right, let's continue drawing her hair. Uh, now the hair begets, gets to be braided together as it forms a ponytail moving its way down. So let's begin to draw the shapes of the braid for her hair. I'll begin by drawing this uh, next large curve moving around the back. 
And then I'll add another little bitty shape, almost forming another little paintbrush, a bigger paintbrush shape here at the bottom. Curving it over. Uh, this next shape uh, also begins to form almost like an uh, like a ice cream twirl, right here across uh, the back side of the head as the hair begins to weave together. All right, with those two big sections work out, now we can begin to form the pattern we're going to use for the ponytail all the way to the bottom. So for this left side, I'm going to draw five curves that take me around to the bottom to the very bottom of her ponytail. One, two, three, four, and my fifth one here is at the very bottom. There's our five curves for the ponytail. These lines can be fairly dark, but when we fill in the, the spaces between the braiding of the hair, we're going to keep that little light. So now the top side of this braid. Here we go. I'm going to draw this time six curves. One, and each one of these curves is going to follow along with the line we've drawn for the braid. Two, three, four, five, and then six. So put us to the ponytail at the very, very bottom. Fantastic. Next. Let's finish out the details of the hair and wrap up our drawing. We're almost done. Let's add in the little bitty curve for her neck, right under the chin. As the chin begins to curve back, we need to add a little bit of the neck, and the neckline will stop there with the hair. Okay. I'll add a couple of eyelashes, the bottom of the left eye that I left out. Got that in. And now let's add the last few details to our hair as it moves across the ponytail. In between here, we'll draw the little bitty sections in uh, betwixt them. So I'll draw this next little division here. Notice each one of these gets a little lighter. So I'm drawing the little bitty uh, sections of our braid as we move through the hair. And there we have all of our hair drawn for Elsa. I like to make those lines darker to set the hair apart from the face. And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. There you go. That is, uh, that's Elsa from Disney Frozen. So don't forget to autograph your work. My name is Mike Avanis, and I'm very, very proud to be a Disney artist. Well, come and see me and the rest of my friends over here at the Animation Academy, and perhaps we'll draw one of your favorite Disney characters. Thanks for joining Elsa with me. I'll see you next time.